Welcome back to the channel. This episode is gonna be about how we create this asset here in Renderman for Maya, so Renderman 22, and it's about the layered shader system. So it's gonna be divided in uh, three sections. First off, just uh, take a look here at the basics of the Pixar layered surface, and then a quick jump into uh, Mari actually just to see here the basics of uh, this the gizmo that I used here to create this the breakup here for this mask here then uh, actually creating this network here so yeah stick around I give some uh, you know timestamps uh, in the description so you do, can skip to whatever section you want to take a look at so and also remember to give your feedback and comments in the comment section on YouTube yeah and if you know here remember to subscribe we're gonna take a look at laid shares now and um, we can uh, assign laid shares using this button here in the Redman shelf so in my case here uh, let's see I pause this I want to apply it onto this lens here so we can start to play with it. So right click uh, Pixar laid surface we get greeted by this. So the Pixar laid surface is very similar to the Pixar surface that's a monolithic shader so if I create one here we can compare. There's a few settings in the Pixar surface that uh, you choose here like physical and artistic and those type of modes. They live inside the shader here, but in the layer equivalent, you have those moved here to the to this node here. So that's the global settings lives in this node, and that's also what you apply onto the object. Assign material. So now this layered surface here is gonna be assigned to this, and the actual container is where you set all of the specific settings that's gonna be global to uh, the whole uh, network above it. For example, if I want to use physical specular here, I can do that. I'm not going to go through all of the settings in this tutorial because I've already covered most of it actually in the Pixar Surface shader, so I can link to it now. The actual layering of uh, shaders is handled here by this layer mixer that's also auto-created. By default, we have a base layer and a layer one here going into it. And this is the, the shader part where uh, it's it's very similar to the Pixar surface, except some of the settings is now moved over here to house the, the general settings. In my case here, for example, let's say I wanna create a, a Chrome. Actually, just uh, let's fire up an uh, IPR here and see what happens. Okay, so there we have it here for example we have two shaders and uh, the mixer so if I go here to my top top one here and start to adjust the color here for example you see it goes green there but if I go to this one and do it set this to red nothing's gonna happen here because this one is completely covering so to test this if I disable layer one here you can see now we have the underlying layer so we will drive the layers with masks for example if I would apply a uh, Pixar checker for example and plug this into my layer mask and see what happens there we can see something happens we need a manifold to the to see this five by five so we can see this so now we can see we have something here where we have a uh, black is gonna take the underlying and white is gonna be the the top so that's a way to actually use layers so you would set up a uh, i guess when you need um, something like a, a chrome and then you have a painted metal on top so the chrome is going to be like metallic and uh, the painted is going to be not really metallic and you might have a dirt layer on top and stuff like that so that's that's one of the ways we can do it and that's what i'm going to do i'm going to set up this um, asset like it's uh, been painted metal uh, with some decals and you can also create new layers have pixar layer 
So now we have the third layer, so we can just hook it up. PXR material out to the layer two, and nothing happens. And that's because the mixer here, you need to enable, and then it's gonna override. So now if we create this, yeah. So my uh, goal is now to rebuild this using uh, my uh, layered approach instead of the more monolithic approach I did before. So first off, I need a few masks. So let's quickly jump over to Mari so we can create a few and then jump back and hook it up. Okay, so here in uh, Mari 4.2 here, um, this is kind of what I'm gonna plan to use for my, my breakup. So it's kind of stylized here, but so I made a, a gizmo here um, so we can like wear and tear and we can uh, have this depending on what size for example of the breakup so yeah so it's it's driven by uh, by curvature and uh, a few masks here this curvature node embryon occlusion and uh, that i'm using and blend so i can start for example if i want to add large breakup have something here and we have fine breakup here as well, like a more finer type of scratches. So what I do now, I am gonna export this out and use this as one of the masks in my layer shader. So it's gonna be wherever it's white here. I'm planning to add uh, scratches for from like uh, into the underlying metal, so to speak. And let's jump into Maya again now and. Uh, Hook this up. Okay, so here in Maya, uh, let's just rename some of this. So this, the top one is gonna be uh, text. I wanna have a text shader. This is gonna be painted metal, double. And the this one, chrome or uh, some kind of metal. So first off, yes, let's create the, the chrome here now. So I was just want to disable uh, the, the top two layers here and uh, make chrome out of this. Diffuse, take this down to black. Go to primary specular and we want to enable it. Set gain and uh, edge color. We want physical and we can take this up. Extinction coefficient three or something like that. See what we got. Let's actually take down the roughness so we see how it's reflecting here. Let's see what happens if we set this to four. Let's take this up to three. That's a very shiny speckle. So we want some roughness. Brush type of metal here. And I also want some advanced here, go to anisotropy and make it this way. So it goes more like this. So let's say that that's the base for this, the whole thing here. So now let's actually create a bump, we can take that. So we have this, the mask here. So you remember I exported the uh, a something like a mask out from uh, Mari browse to that so I have uh, pre uh, formatted this into TEX and I covered that in uh, a another tutorial so gonna be a link in the description for that and also by the way uh, leave your comments on the future topics and stuff like that if, if you want to see and yeah just uh, hang out and uh, give feedback that's uh, very much appreciated do you like laid shader, for example, or do you do uh, uh, everything in as one texture? Uh, I wanna know how you approach stuff if you use it. So mask texture, and um, we wanna enable now here the painted metal layer. So it's gonna be green at the moment. So let's take care of that. So we want a neutral, something like dark but not super dark because if I level this up I want some uh, because if you go here and now set this to zero you see it's gonna completely die so you want you want some 
values in the in even in the lower because when you start to expose this up you want it to follow the exposure you see here i over cranked the gamma Let's set this back and if i would take exposure you see now it's completely white so we want a little more in this maybe something like that i have a noise reduction that's why it goes a little funky in the beginning there so the color 10 there exposes up and now we start to follow you don't want it to be like a black hole there when you expose it up so now we have some values there so let's let's see here now let's do a um, primary specular here so this is gonna be like a painted uh, varnish on top so we want edge color here so we get more like a uh, plastic coating and uh, refraction index i think it's fine by 1.5 there Let's pan around so now we want to start to reveal the the underlying metal here so that's what when we can use this one my mask here so let's hook up um the red channel here into the layer one mask and see what happens you see here it's it's the wrong way around the levels here is uh, or the values is reversed so we have to first reverse it so pixar invert to see here we can take this into there red now let's take off solo well now we have something here we can see we have uh, so the shipping there if i zoom in here and just give it a few seconds so what we can do is actually uh, also let's actually hook up a uh, First clamp Pixar. I like to clamp my masks. It's always a good idea to do that. And uh, actually, I wanna have an exposure in between. I might wanna boost this, but I don't want to have uh, something above one still. So, so with the exposure, I can start to gain up my mask, but I I want it to uh, be clamped be between zero and one because otherwise the mask. And let's start to look strange so now let's let's see let's see what did happen there something happened did i connect the wrong thing there yeah i did yeah okay let's clean this up just scoot this over a bit okay so there we go now we have um something going here so now we can start to expose this up if we want more or less so we can take away and actually i want to do this before i invert it let's try that i think that's actually a better idea because otherwise it's going to be uh, reversed so i don't want to do that and i want to clamp it this should get a, a better setup for me i think so let's see what happens now if i start to expose this up i should get more yeah there we see I get more of the scratches because I'm actually, if I look at this exposure node here, we can see what happens uh, if I can select it. So yeah, by default it's set to zero. So that's the incoming. If I expose it up now, we're gonna get more. So obviously I have to maybe add some more scratches here and there or take away some, but this is just for demonstration. So what we can do now is actually could use this one and uh, use like a bump, for example. So let's hook that up as well. Pixar bump. Let's do that. Mm. So we want the result R to the input bump. This to go to uh, salt normal into this one bump normal, and that's gonna bump it and. It will probably be too much here. So let's take a look at the bump. If I look at this, yeah, you see it's all over the place because the scale is one here. So let's set it to zero one or something or even less. Take away the solo. So now we can see here with or without the noise. So there we have the bump in the base layer um, we could um, experiment to add like a, a micro bump on the specular on this one for example as well so we can try that pix or let's see what what funny things we have here pattern we want um, water noise or 
fractal. Let's try Voronoise and a bump again. Float input. And this one I want to go into the specular. So I only want to bump the specular on this one just for this demonstration. So spec specular bump normal so you can either bump everything or just one component in this case i just want to bump the specular bump so here we can see now something happens and that's because my scale is probably through the roof validate that by looking at this one solo so we can see that yeah we need to increase the frequency and uh, play with the settings and get something super fine noise here see what happens that's a super fine noise if we zoom in yeah so let's go into the pixel bump here now and see what we have so obviously we don't want something this extreme on this one as well so we're gonna set this down to zero one or something let's turn it off and see what we get it's a very fine uh, effect this one so now we can hook up the text so we, we in an earlier tutorial I uh, built like uh, this using more like a pixel surface so I built it with using uh, blend nodes um, so we can hook up that text so let's use pixel texture go to my texture library or uh, my source folder we can get up to um, the layer this one and I guess we have to enable it so I guess we have we'll have blue text now so let's see what happens something like that but this one is gonna be applied now all over so I wanna actually reuse my uh, scratches here or that mask and combine it so it's gonna be uh, scratching through the text as well that's something we can do so we will probably need a like a blend layer node here it's white here whatever is white is gonna be this shader here this one is is this one so we could multiply i guess so we need a pixar blend this one is the simplest we can have a lay blend this one top and i want to look into this one we can't see it yet so that's because it needs to be connected to something i wish actually there was a way to uh, visualize something even if it wasn't connected uh, okay so we need to multiply this now so let's do that so operation multiply this should i'm not sure if we have scratches on yeah there's some scratches there i guess yeah so that will gonna work so now we can see here we have uh, scratches there as well so if i would paint uh, something in this uh, base scratches texture on top of the text it's gonna reveal the underlying metal there as well because it's set up here now with my blend so that's fine we can uh, enable specular on this one as well and let's do that so here we can see my rendering without the noise with the noise if you hit b you will uh, all of those buckets will disappear if you think they are disturbing so yeah that's something but yeah that we can see here now we have uh, either we have to sign uh, because this one is going to be essentially another uh, like uh, revealing the brush metal completely there so we can either uh, assign a new shader or we could use an iso texture i actually don't have that part i have this that and that but i could I can probably go around that by inverting instead so result rgb to the bottom because and result rgb to this one so now we have it in between here and now temporarily it's gonna be strange here because this one has black in the top layer so we can either just take the top alpha down here temporarily 
and uh, we want to insert this guy there's a few ways i can go about to do this so first off let's just hook it up to this blend here top rgb xr to float and uh, hook this up let's take a reverse here as well and this one i want to say luminance let's see what we get so uh, let's enable uh, top alpha to one here and i want to take a look at this guy here yeah we can uh, grade this now actually and see what we got so ideally i would have an, an iso for this part or i can assign a shader but i, I can do this by actually remap the values pixar remap one way to do this input rgb i want to clamp as well pixar clamp just to be sure when you do stuff like this it's, it's good to have a clamp okay so let's scoot this over a bit here and start to build something here so what we want to do is to remap so let's let's play here so what i did was to uh, remap the input max to uh, the smallest luminance value there and then i get this one and uh, so actually now so i need to actually go here now to the top alpha here and see what we have so i wanna yeah i wanna multiply this multiply so now i'm gonna take away this and that's gonna be the metal part so now we will have brush metal there i guess we have this one to take care of and that's that's actually just just create a glass shader it's a piece of surface and uh, create a glass we have it now we have a glass there so what i can do now i could uh, find a brushed metal uh, bump here and apply it here okay so i added a few more nodes and uh, uh, exported a few textures actually from uh, mori so i'm just gonna take a look at some of the things i implemented uh, between where i left off so first off i made this one so if i go here to it and look at the input of this node so i, I exported that like a noise um, combination noise iso uh, grunge so if i cycle through here this one i used as a roughness breakup on uh, the painted layer uh, to break up the, the roughness slightly this one um, i took an uh, tallable texture from uh, substance designer like a scratched metal and uh, tiled it in uh, Mori, so I just and, and um, I use that to break up the foot on the chrome there. This one I didn't implement, I just added it because I have an RGB. Another here texture I exported was this one, so let's take a look. There you go. So I exported proper ISO maps for uh, different parts now because I have a combined for different the, the gearings and all of that. But now I have a nice secondary ISO if I want to actually target so I don't have to combine stuff. So I use that to add uh, like a, to for example my bump here I blend here so this final result. So I made a new bump, it actually looks like this, so some of this here is that brushed metal there, or the brushed metal here. So I added that together with um, a few uh, blend modes here, so one of them is actually taking my scratch mask and adding it together against a 50% grey, and then I used overlay to add this on top of it, so that's, that's what's going on there. And I also used this, the... Um, let's see here what we have here took my pixart float here so this one is gonna target one of the channels so this one i just break out the one i use for the roughness breakup bottom rgb is the the roughness value and the top i use as a breakup with that pattern that's just a, a slight breakup of the specular roughness so in my case it looks kind of funky here but because i only use the the red channel so it's this channel is my roughness for that shader 
So yeah, um, that's kind of what I did to finalize it. And um, let's disable this so you can see the whole asset. And let's go back in it to this mode so we can see colors as well. Uh, so yeah, that's how I left it off. It's it's a kind of a basic way to use three type of shaders. It's especially good if you would, um, let's say that you have an animated scratch happening onto an asset to have a laid approach because then you can just animate the scratch going over if you want to reveal the underlying chrome. Remember to comment and uh, give me feedback. So yeah. I want to hear what your thoughts are about Pixel Aid's shader. Yeah, see you on the channel. Bye bye.